Welcome Maltrons! Okay, that was weird. Welcome Maltrons. So in today's video, I'm going to be going to Michael's and I'm going to be finding some things to make masks. I'm going, and I'm sure you know by the title of this video, I'm going to be making lock, shock, and barrel masks. Now I decided to do this because I am going to be going to Oogie Boogie's Party Bash or whatever it is at Disneyland. Uh, it's a new thing because it used to be the Mickey's Halloween Party, which was similar to Mickey's Not So Scary, which I'm assuming Oogie Boogie is going to be similar to those two. I don't know. I've been to both of those, the Mickey's Not So Scary and Mickey's Halloween Party, and I love them, so I'm excited for the Oogie Boogie one. Anyways, the point being is I need a costume and I was trying to think of like popular Disney characters but not too popular and Lock, Shock, and Barrel were ones that I thought of and I was like, oh, that'd be really cool. I could make some masks. You can't wear the mask so I'm gonna figure out a way to like fix it onto my body so they're not like afraid that I'm gonna put it on. Anyways, anyways, the point being I'm gonna make all three and I thought I would just show you guys. So I'm gonna take you guys to Michael's with me so we can get a feel for my crafting adventures. You guys seem to like it when I do that. I'm gonna bring Bo with me. Anyway, so let's go. Let's get going. Safety first, if I can even get it in there. <laughs> All right, we're here. Let's go in. This is a look. Better. I know they have masks. Where are they? Well, patches. Look at there's Mickey and Minnie patches. I wasn't even showing it to you. Hmm. Not what I want, though. Also, I'm gonna be using clay, but I don't need to buy any because I have some. And I'm gonna be using not a magic. I may need to go to Target and get a plastic plate. And also, you can, this is what I have at home, a big tub of Model Magic. So you can get, well, I got this one, which is all white. So that's what I'm going to be using. I have used regular clay on my other one, the one that I did make in the video that I posted down below. Did I mention that? But yeah, I did. Um, but obviously, it's a little more fragile and it's a lot heavier. So I recommend Model Magic. Anyways, it's busy in here. I'm talking to myself and... Let's go to Target really quick and see what we can find after I buy these masks. Maybe this. So I would have to probably use like a Dremel. I'm probably gonna, if I do get this, because it's only 79 cents, I'm probably gonna recruit my husband to do it for me. And I apologize, the music's super loud. Alrighty, so Target Expedition, Expedition? I don't really know. It's done. I'm done shopping at Target. I would have filmed more, but apparently Target thinks that the best shopping environment is one your eardrums to burst from the loud music. And I ain't about that life. Anyways, let's go, uh, let's go see what we can do, what kind of damage we can do with these, these masks. Let's make some masks, y'all. So we got our mask that we got at Michael's, and the first thing that we actually need to do is prep the surface of the mask first because it is not, I mean it's, it, I don't know, like it'd be hard to paint on it and it not chip with the like type of material that it is, how it's all like shiny and smooth because I'm using acrylic paint. So I'm actually going to take this, which is, uh, it's called gesso or gesso, I'm not really sure how you pronounce it, I say gesso. And so I'm going to put a layer of that on this um, just to prep the surface so that I can paint on it later. All right, now that we have a good layer of gesso on there, we are going to have to let it dry, obviously, before we start doing much else. Um, so we're gonna just set that aside for now. So the next step is going to be reshaping. So it's nice and primed, it's dry. It doesn't take that long to dry in all honesty. It looks like he has a very um, triangle, triangle, triangular shaped nose. So what I'm gonna do is try and shape it first because I do need to put some form of adhesive down, but I don't want to do that quite yet. I just want to kind of get an idea of how much clay I need before I try and adhere it down. Like, I'm just gonna semi-shape it because I'm gonna have to have the glue down at the bottom as I'm shaping it. Okay, yeah, so I think that's good, so. Let me just take that back off. So I'm just gonna stick some E6000 kind of in this general area. It's going to squish around underneath the clay, so that'll help it adhere to the whole thing. Okay. 
All right, now that we have our base part of the mask, as you can see here, it kind of looks like a beak, but he has like a pointy nose, kind of like a beak. It's not the best, it's not the smoothest. I tried my hardest. I'm actually going to put some of the E6000 glue on my palette, my painter's palette over here, and I'm going to brush it on to the edges. go we just need to let that dry okay so that's uh that's that we need to add the um horns as well now so uh let me get the clay out off camera because it's all gonna be crinkly all right so i don't know how much i'm gonna need uh i think i'm just gonna do one horn each and put it on because it'll be easier that way i mean he has this is the complicated part decisions yeah i think i am gonna do that and then i can add some clay in the middle if necessary his horns aren't that big do that like snake method remember when you're a kid and you made a snake okay so i'm gonna do this and i'm going to the reason why i'm telling i have to lay down the mask because it's not going to the horn itself this clay's too floppy so I have to lay it down in order to do this. So I'm gonna make that shape like I just showed you. So what I did is, you know, get a ball of clay, roll it around like so, and then just kinda like do that. And then you have your horn. And then I'm going to place it here with some glue underneath like I did with this one. I'm gonna like shape it out on the mask like I did with that. And then I'm gonna add some glue around the edges like I did with that one as well. And then I'm going to uh, let them sit until they dry. And yeah, I'll be right back. Alrighty, so as you can see, I added the horns. I just, like I showed you, made the shape, glued them on. They're still a little bit wet, but they're able to stand up on their own so I could put this back. So the next step is I need to make the chin pointy. Luckily, I think I have just enough of the Model Magic. I mean, I have more, but left in this bag to make the chin pointy. So hopefully I can work on it like this because I want those horns to sit up and may be making a big mistake. I don't know. I think that's good. And there you are. I'm gonna add some glue around the sides again, and that's pretty much it for that. Then we'll start painting. All right, so I'm going to add another layer of gesso to the whole mask, on the clay, on the mask itself. Let it dry, and then we can start the painting. So the next step I actually need to do is map out the ma math, not math. I need to map out the mouth section. So the primer has had time to set. He has a pretty big smile. So I'm hoping that'll also help hide, oops, hide some of um, the uh, imperfection. Alright, so this kind of gives me an idea. Like I said, I'll probably touch it up, like turn this towards me and actually look at it face on. But the next step is you're going to have to mix some colors together. So if you look at a reference photo of his mask, if you look at it, it's like a pinky red color. It's not really red. And then I am going to be adding shadows and highlights to it so that it just looks better in person as opposed to the block coloring that looks great through the video, but not much for your own mask. So go ahead and mix up some red colors that you think fit well for the mask and uh, we'll get to painting. As you can see, I've used this, this palette for many other things. We're gonna ignore all that and just focus on the colors right here. These are different colors of reds and oranges and red oranges that I am putting on just in case I need to add or take away colors. And this is the primary color I'm gonna be putting on the whole thing. It is a mix of this, which is like a pinky red color. So I'm gonna just cover the whole mask in that color. So I'm gonna start with the horn.
But I do need to let this dry fully and then I'm gonna add another layer of paint the same color on top. Okay, so now that we've got this base down, there's two layers. It looks nice and opaque. I think it looks pretty good. And yes, the mask is pink. I double checked because my roommate was like, why is it pink? Isn't his mask red? No. So anyways, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take the darker red color that we have and I'm going to be shadowing it on the sides of the nose to make it look a little bit more pointed. And I'm going to take some of the pink color as well and kind of mix it towards the end. So like put the darker red and use some of the pink to kind of like work it down. I'm going to use that to try and make it look more pointed than it already is. Maybe add some shadowing right underneath the nose as well. I did give him a little bit of nostrils. He doesn't really have that in the movie, but I added that. And I'm also gonna add some on the sides of the face kind of right here to make it look more pointed because the mask is round and I could cut it, but I'm just gonna kind of shadow and play with it instead. I'm also gonna be adding that darker color around the eyes. Another thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to kind of add a, um, almost like an eye bag like this because it kind of looks like sometimes he may have one. All right, so here we are with the mask. So the next step is going to be, I'm going to grab some black and white um, acrylic paint and I'm going to put the black inside the mouth, obviously, and the white on the teeth. And that's, uh, that's pretty much it, I think. So let's just do that and see how it goes. Alright, so here's the finished lock mask. I have it hanging on the wall right now. Yeah. On to mask number two. Alright, so the next one I'm gonna do is shock, and in theory this one should be easier. She does have like a flat head that I'm, I'm just not gonna do. I'm just gonna have mine be round, and then I'm gonna make a triangle nose. First thing I'm gonna do is take a brush and take my gesso like I did before and prime just like I did the first one. So, let's do that. So we're gonna let it dry. It's a little bit textured and weird for some reason. The primer didn't want to take on this one. I'm gonna let that dry. All right, so this is the part where I am getting the Macabre Magic and the E6000 glue, and I'm gonna make a pointed nose, and I'm gonna use the E6000 glue on the nose, and that's all I need to do with the Model Magic on this one. Alright, so I molded this clay onto it, the Model Magic, and I used E6000 glue to um, glue it on, and I also used some E6000 glue on the edges here to kind of just like make sure the edges are going to stay, plus I'm going to help kind of smooth it out like where these cracks happened or, you know, the edges here, just a little bit. And then I'm going to now stick another layer of the primer on and let it all dry. Once that dries, I'm going to now then go in with some paints. So while it's kind of setting there, I'm going to be grabbing all these different green paints and white and black, and I'm gonna mix them to make all the different shades that I think I'm going to need for this. I'm looking at a reference photo, so she has kind of like a olive green mask, if I recall. I'll have to look, up, look it up again. And then I'm gonna start painting. So let's set that aside. Let's grab our painter's palette. And let's get mixing. So as you can see, I have like a teal greenish color mix there. That's just plain green. 
the same green I used to make this color. That's the same blue I used to make that color, so they have their own. Then I have these two other blues. I don't think I'll use that one. It looks a little too purple. So these are probably the colors I'll stick with for this look. And so let's just uh, let's get started. This may not be blue enough. So this is 110% to green, which is fine. So I just added a very light layer all over the mask. And now I'm going to be making another color using this. So using the same colors I already had, I'm going to be mixing them, but making them bluer and then adding a more opaque layer over this. I just need to make it all even. I'm, I'm working in layers because to me that just works better. So you can do whatever, whatever works for you, but I like to do layers. So now we just need to let this dry and then add a second layer on. All right, so I mixed a darker version of the same kind of color and I'm gonna start adding shadows around the face, including these like eye bags, kind of like the other, getting a lot of text messages. Kind of like the other one I did, um, I'm gonna add some just details and things that I feel like adding, so let's get going. Alright, so this is pretty much all I can do for the shock mask. This one looks a little bit more textured uh, where the glue and stuff is than the other one. I didn't do as good of a job hiding that stuff, but I think it looks okay. Her mask is pretty simple, and I made it purposely have my get it to focus. This, like, textured... There, you can kind of, I don't know, it's not focusing, but, like, you can kind of see the brush marks. I did that on purpose to kind of give it more character as if it needed more I guess so that's that and so if you don't remember I don't know if I like really showed but this is the shock mask and you can tell that there is still indentions on it where the why is my camera not focusing I'm sorry but they're they're not as noticeable all right so we're on to the third and final mask so this is going to be the barrel mask obviously so if you remember we got that plate so this is the plate. What happened was I asked my husband to cut out these two holes. They are as perfect as they're gonna get. And then also I asked him to cut these holes on the side so that I can put a ribbon in there. Um, I have ribbon at home. You can obviously buy ribbon anywhere. So then also what he did is he actually sanded the whole thing down. So he sanded the words off of it and he sanded the circle. Like it had like a, I don't know, like how plates have on the very ends of them, like a little circle. So when you set it down, they are flat. So he did that as well. So it's nice and smooth. And I actually do not need to prime this one because of it being sanded and everything. It'll be good for me to just start painting. So we're gonna grab some paints, grab some ribbon and get started. Okay, so the first step in this process getting that out of here. I'm gonna add the ribbon to these holes. Um, you can get white ribbon. Uh, you can get white ribbon at Michael's or at Walmart or even probably the Dollar Tree, but I don't have any white ribbon and I have so much ribbon just from the years of collecting it and using just a little portion of it. I think I got this one at the Dollar Tree, um, especially with like the generic pack packaging. It kind of looks like it, but I may have gotten some at Michael's and I got it last year. I know that both Michael's and um, the Dollar Tree tend to repeat patterns, so you can probably find this one one, but you can also just do white like the other ones like now all my other ones have white ribbon and this one's gonna be a spider so I'm gonna add these here and the reason why I'm adding the ribbon first because I may accidentally paint on it is because I want to tie it to the easel so that it doesn't slide around while I'm trying to paint it I did that with both of the other ones so let's get that started All right, so the next step is I'm going to grab a pencil and I'm gonna map out the teeth. Uh, he does have two, so he does have a little bump on his nose like right here. It's like a little 
bit of a triangle nose. So maybe I will add that on. And then it looks like he has two little nostrils. Okay, so I think that's a good basic setup for what his mask is going to look like. So next I need to grab some of that model magic out to make the little tiny square nose that he has. And then he has some like slits in his nose as well. And uh, let's just get that started. Again, like I didn't have to prime. So, and also uh, using E6000 glue just like the other one. So let's get going. Alright, so here is the mask so far. So as you can see, I put the Model Magic nose right here. For now, what I'm gonna do is take white paint, white acrylic paint, and cover the whole entire thing, except for the nose right now, because the Model Magic isn't quite dry, and not the teeth line, because I'm gonna be painting those later, and I don't wanna like lose the sketch. So for now, just painting the rest white. Alright, so this is kind of where I'm going to stop for a second. I'm going to let it kind of fully dry. I added a few really small layers of white, but I am going to add more. But I'm also going to have the nose dry a little bit before I add a layer on top of that as well. So, I'm kind of just going to let it sit for a second and come back. Okay, so these are the colors that you're really going to need for this mask. So you'll need like a black, a white, a gray, and a very light green because that's what the teeth are. And so what I'm going to do right now is take the white and gray mainly and just kind of start adding the detail that I want to add to the whole thing, covering the whole thing in white, and then adding some gray shadows around the nose. Also some black inside the nostrils. So as I keep working on this and touching up the white and kind of mixing all the white and the gray together, I'm also going to now outline the teeth in that gray. Alright, so now we're taking that slightly green color and we're going to be filling in the teeth. So I actually quite like how the mask is looking like this, so I think this is where I'm going to end it. This is the final barrel mask, and the final mask of all three. Alright, so here they are. We got barrel, we got lock, and we got shock. And that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Give me any other deals on art-related projects, and I shall see you guys next time. Bye!